In the 21st century, coyotes can be found throughout the eastern United States. Before European settlers came to America and cleared the forests, another native canine lived here. Wolves used to be a top predator in eastern North America. Now the forests have come back, and along with the trees have come deer, turkey, beaver, fisher, and yes, a wild canine. Only this time, it's the eastern coyote. Coyotes are a native species that used to be confined to the Great Plains. The eastern coyote is descended from them with a small amount of wolf and dog DNA woven in during a period of interbreeding many years ago. Coyotes have been established residents of coastal New England since the 1970s. Eastern coyotes have proven to be highly adaptable. They opportunistically consume everything from small mammals and birds to livestock and pets, fruits and vegetables, carrion and garbage. As they forage, coyotes can exert important beneficial influences on the whole ecosystem. They help control the populations of deer and rodents and with them the ticks that carry Lyme disease. Their habitat has also expanded to include a variety of natural and human surroundings, forests and fields, scrublands and wetlands, suburban backyards, and even built-up urban areas. Dr. Numi Mitchell of the Conservation Agency in Jamestown, Rhode Island, has been studying coyotes in the suburban environment for over 15 years. She has seen solutions to the coyote problem come and go, including lethal control. And the coyotes are still here. 51 pounds. Because of the coyotes' own biology. But biology might make it possible to manage their populations by managing their food supply. Want to get involved in Dr. Mitchell's research? We're looking for coyote hotspots. We want to set up field cameras, put on tracking collars, and sample scat to learn about coyote population, territory, and diet. If you live in Rhode Island and know where there's a lot of coyote activity, contact us. Watch the project page, call the Howl Line, or send sightings online. From time immemorial, humans have naturally felt discomfort around wild predators such as coyotes. The more coyotes get food from humans, the bolder and more visible they become. And the more conspicuous coyotes are, the more people want to do something about them, to make themselves feel safe again. This is no different in today's developed towns and cities than it was in our rural and agricultural past. Hunting and trapping coyotes has been practiced for centuries for recreation, to harvest fur, or to control predators, and it's legal in many areas. Hunting can keep coyotes wary of humans, or it can be used to eliminate problem coyotes. But for controlling overall coyote populations, especially in suburban situations, it is not always effective. The forests are back and can't be cleared again. The eastern coyote has very different biology and behavior than wolves. Maybe if we knew more about coyotes, how and when they breed, how they define and defend their territories, and how they become so acclimated to humans, we could find more efficient ways to prevent problems and reduce fear while preserving coyotes' ecological benefits to safely coexist. Hi, Numi. Hi, Ani. Come on in. Thank you. So what are we doing today? Well, I'm trying to animate why it doesn't work to kill coyotes. So why has the coyote population become such an issue? We didn't have them here to start with, and they came in from the West, and people are pretty alarmed about them because they're predators, and of course they eat pets. And they're actually becoming really abundant. So what are people doing to control the population now? Unfortunately, it's the old default, which hasn't worked in 150 years. It's lethal control. So why hasn't it worked? Because of the biology of the animals. And this is something we're working on with our tracking. What about their biology makes this method impractical? They're territorial. And then there are also these coyotes called transients, which make a problem. So what are their territories consist of? In this picture, I drew a Quidnick Island with 10 
coyote families, and those families are called packs. They each have a territory that they defend. The animals that defend it are the two most important animals in the pack, the alpha male and alpha female. They also breed and have the puppies, but most of the year they live together defending this territory every night, exploring around, defending the boundaries, making sure no other coyotes come in. And then there's also beta coyotes in the, in the family group. And the beta? Babysitters. When the coyotes have puppies, they'll take care of them while the male and female hunt. How many puppies do the alphas have in a year? Well, that depends on how much food. And that's a really important point because they have as many pups as the food resources will support. So if there's more food, the female will have more puppies and up to seven of them. Or if there's less food, she might only have two or three pups. So what are these transients that you were talking about? By fall, these seven puppies are getting large and eating a tremendous amount and stressing out the parents and the beta. They're also getting hormones and challenging their parents. So the parents kick them out and they become transients. Maybe one or two stay and become betas, but the rest are just wandering the island in between the territories, trying to find a place to live. They're looking for a place to colonize. They're looking for a way in. And if all of these packs, family groups that I've shown here, have, say, five pups that become transient, then we have 10 packs, five pups, 50 transient coyotes available to come in. Wow, yeah, that's a lot. So what about them makes shooting impractical? What happens is with lethal control, often people shoot out the animals that are defending a territory and keeping other coyotes out. If you shoot a hole in that territorial boundary and 50 transients available to colonize, a lot of those animals will flow in and you'll actually have more coyotes than you had to start with. So how do we manage coyotes? Basically by managing ourselves. We provide so many food subsidies to coyotes, it's unbelievable. If we stop providing food like farm livestock waste, garbage, dump site foods, cat food in cat colonies, pet food outdoor, the coyote populations will drop to a level sustainable by natural food resources like mice. They won't be going into residential areas and interacting with humans. If we manage ourselves, coyotes will manage themselves. What we tell people is, is this, Ani. Be a good neighbor. Don't feed coyotes. Keep our wildlife wild.